Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, uh, we're going to be diving into a story that takes us from a contaminated river in Colorado okay. to the heart of Cold War era nuclear testing. Wow. Um, you've sent us a collection of articles about the 2015 Gold King mine spill. Right. And as we unpack this, we're okay. going to uncover some surprising connections yeah. and some thought-provoking questions about government accountability and mm. the choices we make in the pursuit of resources. It's amazing how a seemingly isolated event yeah. can just un unveil such complex layers of history yeah. and, and bring up these really crucial questions about yeah. how we interact with our environment. Absolutely. So let's set the scene. It's August 2015. Picture a beautiful summer day in Colorado. Mm. People are enjoying the Animas River. And then without warning, the river turns a shocking orange. Oh, wow. Not exactly what you want to see in a waterway you rely on. Right. This is the Gold King mine spill. And to understand its implications, okay. we need to go beyond the surface. And one of the key things to remember here is this wasn't just some accident waiting to happen. Right. It was the EPA in an attempt to clean up the Gold King mine that accidentally triggered this massive release of contaminated water. It almost sounds like a cruel irony, right? It does. The agency tasked with protecting our environment becomes the perpetrator of an environmental disaster. It really does. It certainly raises questions about accountability mm -hmm. and the challenges of addressing the legacy of mining. For sure. Speaking of which, can you talk about the cause of all this contamination? Sure. What exactly is acid mine drainage and why is it such a persistent problem? So acid mine drainage. Um, this is a challenge wherever you have abandoned mines, Okay. not just a gold king. Right. Essentially, you've got water interacting with exposed metal ores in these mines. Okay. And when water meets pyrite, which is a mineral that contains sulfide minerals, mm -hmm. it creates a chemical reaction, and that creates sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid, that's not good, obviously. Not good at all. It's highly corrosive. Uh, right. It eats away at surrounding rocks and minerals. Wow. And through this process, called acid mine drainage, leaches heavy metals like lead, arsenic, and cadmium into the water. Oh, wow. Creating that toxic cocktail that turned the Animus River orange. It's like a hidden poison seeping out from these abandoned mines. Yeah. So, nine years later, how are things looking at the Bonita Peak Mining District, where the Gold King Mine is located? Well, it's been designated as a Superfund site, right. which means it's a high priority for cleanup. Okay. But an article you shared from Casey Public Radio pointed out, yeah, progress has been slow, mm. and there's a lot of frustration among the communities impacted by the spill. Right. They're dealing with the long-term consequences. Contaminated water, health concerns, right. and the emotional toll of seeing their environment so drastically impacted. It makes you think about that quote from Peter Butler, the former Animus River Stakeholders Group Coordinator. Right. Who expressed his, you know, disappointment with the pace of the cleanup and the lack of meaningful engagement with the affected communities. Yeah. It's clear that cleaning up a mine is not as simple as just containing the immediate damage. Yeah. We're talking about a complex ecosystem yep. and the consequences ripple out in so many ways. And this isn't just about one mine, it's about the entire watershed. Right. And the communities who depend on it. Yeah. And then there's the legal battle that emerged from the Gold King mine spill, right. adding another layer of complexity to this already intricate situation. As you can imagine, the Gold King mine spill triggered a wave of lawsuits from those affected. Oh, yeah? New Mexico, Utah, right. the Navajo Nation, all pointed fingers at the EPA, right. seeking compensation for the environmental damage and economic hardship caused by the spill. And the EPA's response is really interesting here. Um, they claimed sovereign immunity, Okay. arguing that as a government agency, they couldn't be sued without their consent. So essentially they were saying, yeah, we messed up, but yeah. you can't touch us. Oh, yeah. That doesn't seem right. Well, it's a complex legal concept rooted in this idea that governments shouldn't be bogged down by endless lawsuits. Right. But as you point out, it raises questions about accountability, mm -hmm. especially in a situation where a government agency's actions directly led to such significant harm. It definitely makes you wonder if the EPA can claim immunity in a case like this. Yeah. What's to stop other government agencies from making similar arguments in the future? Exactly. Where do we draw the line? And that brings us to a rather interesting historical parallel right here in the same region. Okay. This question of government accountability and the long-term consequences of resource extraction 
takes us back to the 1960s. Okay. To a little known chapter of the Cold War. Okay. Project Gas Buggy. Project Gas Buggy. Okay, this is where things get really interesting. We're going from a mind spill to- Do it. What exactly? <laughs> Imagine this. The U.S. government using nuclear explosions to try and extract natural gas. Wow. It sounds like something out of science fiction, but it was a real program. Wow. Called Operation Plowshare. Okay. Project Gas Buggy, one of their experiments, took place in 1967 in New Mexico. Surprisingly close to the Gold King Mine, actually. Hold on. They were setting off nuclear bombs to get natural gas? They were. How does that even work? So the idea was that the explosion would fracture the rock formations deep underground, okay. creating a giant cavity where the trapped natural gas could collect and be more easily extracted. Okay. It was a bold, some might say reckless, attempt to harness the power of the atom for civilian purposes. And what happened? Did it work? Did they end up with a whole bunch of natural gas? Well, they did get some gas, <laughs> but it came with a hefty price tag. Yeah. It literally, the project was incredibly expensive. But more importantly, the environmental consequences were significant. Right. And the extracted gas itself was too radioactive for commercial use. Remember all those concerns we discussed about heavy metals and contaminated water? Right. Well, imagine adding radioactive materials to the mix. So both the Gold King Mine Spill and Project Gas Buggy represent attempts to access resources, right? Right. But with drastically different approaches yeah. and outcomes. It makes you wonder. Yeah. Are we any closer to finding a balance right. between our need for resources and our responsibility to protect the environment? It's a million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And it becomes even more complicated when we consider the long term impact of these actions. Right. With the Gold King mine spill, we see the immediate devastation. Yeah. But the effects of heavy metal contamination can linger for generations. And with Project Gas Buggy, even decades later, we're still grappling with the legacy of radioactive materials underground. It's a stark reminder that some mistakes can have very long shadows. Exactly. And it highlights this recurring theme that we've been circling. Right. This pattern of government actions, mm -hmm. often driven by you know, this promise of progress or resource acquisition, yeah. having unintended and often long-lasting consequences, it makes you question are we learning from these mistakes? Mm -hmm. Are we truly considering the full weight of our actions? Right. Not just for the present, but for the future. It's definitely something to ponder. Looking back at Project Gas Buggy with all we know now about nuclear contamination, it's hard to imagine that anyone thought it was a good idea. It's easy to judge with the benefit of hindsight. Right. But it's a valuable reminder that what seems like progress at one point in time can later be revealed as a grave misstep. Yeah. It underscores the need for continuous scrutiny, right. for questioning assumptions, right. and considering the potential downsides of any action, right. especially when it comes to our environment. So where does this leave us? What can we take away from all of this? It feels like we've uncovered more questions than answers. And in a way, that's the point of a deep dive, isn't it? Yeah. To challenge our assumptions, right. delve into complexity, yeah. and emerge with a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of these issues. The Gold King mine spill wasn't just an isolated incident. It's a microcosm of these larger challenges we face in balancing resource extraction with environmental protection. It's about government accountability, corporate responsibility, and our own individual choices as consumers and citizens. We started with a contaminated river, and we ended up talking about nuclear explosions in the desert. Yeah. It's been quite a journey. But ultimately, it all comes back to the same fundamental question. Right. How do we create a sustainable future? Right. How do we reconcile our need for resources with our responsibility to protect the planet for generations to come? It's a question that will continue to challenge us, and there are no easy answers. Right. But by engaging in these conversations, yeah. by learning from the past, mm. and by considering the long-term consequences of our actions, we can at least strive to create a future where stories like the Gold King Mine Spill and Project Gas Buggy serve as cautionary tales, mm -hmm. reminding us to proceed with greater awareness, caution, and a commitment to true sustainability. Well said. We'll leave our listeners with that thought. This deep dive might be over, but the conversation certainly isn't. Thanks for joining us.